All right, all right. So, my talk is online, as always, at talks.php.net, Twitter, at Rasmus. So, I'm old. Uh, older than, I think, everyone in this room, maybe with a few, or well, maybe a couple of exceptions, one or two, maybe. But I, I'm turning 50 this year, which is, in the source world, is quite old. Um, at my company where I work at Etsy, I'm one of the two or three oldest in the company. I mean, this business we're in is a young business, right? It's for young people, mostly. Um, I started off, hey, here we have the other room coming, good, welcome. I can speed up. Um, I started off in the 80s. This was my first computer, Timex Sinclair. Has like, had 1K of memory. The big block on the back is a 16K memory expansion module. And I learned to do a lot of low-level programming because that module was so big and heavy, it would sometimes come loose. So my program would go from having 17K of memory down to 1K instantly. So I had to make sure my critical loop were in the lower 1K at all times so my code wouldn't crash and they could then repopulate the upper memory. It's types of things we don't think about these days, really. Um, but maybe with cloud computing and dynamic memory resizing and things like that, maybe some of this stuff comes back. We'll see. Big 20, like many people, dreamt of getting a Haze modem so I could actually go online and do interesting stuff. Spent a lot of time sitting there watching Z modem download stuff. This was the internet for me. This was the web. There was no web, basically. Web started off slowly with Gopher in the early 1990s, worked a bit on that. And it wasn't until 93 when we saw Mosaic, the first web browser, first graphical web browser come out, that I really got into web development full time. And that's when I started PHP. And that's where the PHP story starts, in about mid to late 1993, where I started building websites. The code of my early stuff looked like this. So these are CGI. C programs, you can see HTML inside a C program. Any tiny UX type of change you wanted to make, you had to recompile your C code and redeploy it, and it was really easy to screw up your C code, especially if you're handing off the visual design to somebody else back then. Handing them a C program and asking a visual designer not to mess up C, that didn't work so well. So I needed a better solution than this, because I hated doing the front-end stuff. I've always hated doing front-end work. I was always a back-end person. So most of the web in 93 switched over to Perl, CGI PM. It's a Perl module that lets you code CGI programs in Perl. To me, this wasn't that much better. It just meant that I'm handing off Perl code to the UX person and asking them not to screw up Perl which might actually be a harder ask than asking them not to screw up C, because Perl can be screwed up in so many interesting ways. Um, so I wanted something more like this. I wanted my HTML to look like HTML. I wanted to be able to hand off things to the designers in a way that they couldn't possibly screw up. Right? Well, they could still mess up HTML, but I mean, that's their job. They should know the HTML part. And I just wanted to give them a couple of magical tags that they could add to their library of HTML that they knew and have them solve domain-specific problems using that. And I would basically give people a cheat sheet and say, okay, you know HTML, here for this particular application that we're working on, here are 12 extra fancy tags that you can use to pull in back-end data and do interesting stuff with. Um, and that was, that was the birth of PHP. It was a templating system for the longest time. And I always resisted this desire to make it a language and call it a language. To me, it was a way of interfacing um, HTML and the backend C code that talked to all the backend systems. The problem was, though, that people wanted to do more and more logic in the templating system. Nobody wanted to write C code. And I couldn't convince people to write C code because the web was growing so fast and there weren't enough C developers in the world. My idea of PHP never came to be. My idea of PHP is not the PHP we have today. My idea was for PHP to be a very well-structured C API for the web, where you write all your business logic in C, a fast, strongly typed language, and you only do so that the visual logic, the, the display logic in the templating system. 
but the entire world disagreed with me. They wanted to do all the hardcore business logic in the templating system. And yes, I had added some language-like features to the templating system, so you could have snippets of things, snippets of a template that you could repeat through calling a function, and you could do most sort of language-like things, but the intent wasn't to build business logic in that. It was to make it a very rich templating system. And my ultimate failure came when people started writing templating systems for my templating system. And I, at that point, I knew I had lost. <laughs> so, having lost that battle and sort of given in, the task then was to make, okay, since this didn't start off as a templating or as a programming language, it was a templating system, now we have to switch gears, and I have to switch gears, and actually make this rather crappy templating language a good programming language. And that has taken some years, and there's a lot of legacy things in there because of that. And PHP gets a lot of criticism because of some of these legacy features. Um, but we've always strived to not break backwards compatibility because there's just so much code out there. Some people say up to 80% of all websites have some level of PHP on them. Imagine how big the web is, and if we go and break 80% of it, not cool. So our latest thing was speeding up existing sites and speeding up the web. We did that with PHP 7. And many sites will see 100% performance improvement, so basically double the speed. Some sites will have even more than that. Sometimes, some sites will speed up uh, three to four times just by upgrading from PHP 5 to PHP 7. And we did that by focusing on memory usage. We started off trying with a JIT because Facebook's HHVM had shown us what could be done with a good JIT. So we said, hey, let's, let's write a JIT, and we did. And this JIT created fractals really, really fast. But it didn't speed up your WordPress site. It didn't speed up your Drupal site. It didn't speed up any real-world PHP sites out there. So we abandoned the idea of a JIT and instead really focused hard on reducing memory usage and also improving CPU cache usage. Worked a bit with the Intel compiler team, and they helped us uh, profile and narrow down some of the places where we're blowing away L2 caches at the CPU level. And a lot of low-level things like that, getting better data locality for data that we're moving around. You fetch stuff from the database, don't copy it from the database buffer to another buffer. Try to keep it all in one buffer and never moving things around. Same when you're calling functions, don't make copy of the function arguments. So a lot of things were done to make sure that we only ever put data in memory once and then always refer back to it. And lots of other interesting tricks. So here's a piece of code that makes 100,000, um, makes an array with 100,000 little arrays inside. So a nested array. In PHP 5, this takes up 109 megabytes of memory. PHP 7, with no opcache, takes about 42 megabytes because of some of these low-level reductions we made in the hash table and hash table buckets. Um, but we also have an opcode cache by default now in PHP 7, which is a big chunk of shared memory where we can toss things into. And we actually make use of the shared memory segment. So when you have static arrays like this, we copy it into shared memory and we store it as an array in shared memory once. So each um, client or each process. It's either an Nginx PHP FPM process or it might be an Apache child process with mod PHP loaded in. It's actually only stored once in shared memory and all the individual processes don't have their own copy unless you change it. If you make a modification to one of these elements, then that element gets copied down into local memory because that change may not be relevant to the other parallel processes that are accessing this memory. That gets a little bit complicated because you have many different processes all accessing the same memory, so you have to be quite careful. And it took quite a bit of work to get to that stage. But the memory reduction is dramatic in cases like this. Like going from 109 megabytes to six megabytes is a huge, huge memory reduction. Some of the other things we did, lots and lots of optimizations across the entire code page. And this, this code at the time was 22 years old, this code base. 
Now we're close to 25 years old. Making an old code base like this twice as fast without breaking backwards compatibility is a small miracle. I mean, this is not an easy thing to do. Basically, if you look at low-level instructions, we're now doing the same work without breaking anything in one-third the number of instructions that PHP 5 used to do the thing. So basically, it's like taking your code and saying, delete two-thirds of it, but make it behave exactly like it did before on a code base that's 25 years old. Good luck doing that on your own code base. We still don't have a JIT in PHP 7, and we will probably revisit the JIT for PHP 8. So we still have this opportunity for a major speed boost. All of the speed improvements in PHP 7 came from the memory reduction and the optimization that we did on the core. We still have this opportunity to introduce a JIT. So we may see another big bump. All right, so actual numbers here. This is WordPress 4.8, running on PHP 5.3, 5.4, all the way up to PHP 7.2. And you can see we went from about 154 requests per second to 540 requests per second, going from 5.3 to 7.2. This FDO is kind of a special build of PHP 7.2. GCC, the compiler that we use, has a cool feature called Feedback Directed Optimization, FDO. And what that means, it's kind of like an external JIT. What you can do is you can build a learning version of PHP, and then you can train it on your specific data. And then you recompile it as special version. You get a special version of PHP that is tuned directly for your particular workload. So in this case, I am training it for WordPress. So you do make prof gen, so you generate this profiling version of PHP, you train it, an easy way to do that is called PHP CGI minus T. This says run this a thousand times. And because the front page of WordPress pulls in basically all of WordPress through includes, you don't need to hit any other pages. For your particular stuff, you may want to hit a couple of entry points into your application. And then prof clean and make prof use. And that gives you the binary. And that gives you this um, binary I used here, which is about a 2 to 3% increase over the, the non-profile, the non-optimized version. And this is not a PHP thing. You can do that for any Linux binary. You can build um, an FDO version of your binary for your particular workload. All right. What's more important than straight sort of performance, single process performance, is actually memory use. And here we can see how it's gone down from, in WordPress from 5.3 to 7 going from 140 megabytes of memory needed for 10 parallel processes serving up WordPress, it's gone down to 15. It's another massive, massive memory drop. And it means if you're hosting stuff on cloud instances, it means that you can pay for much smaller instances to serve up the same amount of traffic with PHP 7. So the request density of PHP 7, it's more than just the fact that PHP 7 is twice as fast. It means that it's twice as fast, and you can put probably six to eight times more load on that server. So if you have, say, 80 instances in the cloud, you could probably do the same work with 10, which is a huge, huge difference. At Etsy, when I upgraded to PHP 7 a couple of years ago, here's a graph. This is PERC 95 response time, so latency with two servers running PHP 5 and two servers running PHP 7. So the latency dropped from about 460 milliseconds down to 260 milliseconds. So we cut off 200 milliseconds of latency on the production Etsy servers by upgrading with no code changes. Um, CPU per request, so CPU usage got cut in half, thereabouts. And memory went from about 80 megabytes down to 12 megabytes of memory per HTTPD process. We're using Apache in this case. So it was a massive, massive reduction in, in hosting needs. I was able to, during testing, I turned off two-thirds of my production servers at Etsy to the point where the, the ops 
were screaming, going, what's going on? I mean, you're turning off all our production servers. Stop it. This is, this is scary. But I was showing them, look, we're serving up the same traffic. It's serving up faster with only one third of our actual servers. And it makes a huge, huge difference. Because there are around 2 billion sites on the web. So the web is hosted on about 10 million physical machines right now. And PHP, very conservatively, is on 50%. It's likely much higher than that. So right now, we're at 5 to 6% adoption of PHP 7. So about 250,000 physical servers have upgraded. If you start looking at energy usage for those, at 5% adoption, lots and lots of savings, lots of less CO2 being spewed out in the atmosphere, but I would like to see it go to 100%. There's really no reason not to upgrade to PHP 7. The incompatibilities between PHP 5 and PHP 7 are quite minor. And it's easy to go back to your PHP 7 and just look at some of your warnings and look at your notices. If you're running clean PHP 5 code that doesn't spew out a ton of warnings and notices about deprecated things, it's going to be a very, very easy upgrade to PHP 7. Yes, if your PHP 5 code looks like PHP 4 code that spews thousands and thousands of warnings in PHP 5, you have a bit of work to do. But it's work that you should be doing because your code is ancient then. All right, so please, please, please do your part. Upgrade to PHP 7. I have a 16-year-old son. I would like for him to have a world he can actually live in for the rest of his life. If you don't upgrade to PHP 7, he will get angry at you. <laughs> All right, so PHP 7.2, what's new? Uh, so PHP 7.2 is the current version of PHP. We are doing some initial DCE and SCCP optimizations, which probably means absolutely nothing to you, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in the next slide. Um, some of the more easily to understand features, parameter type widening, widening means that if you are extending a class, you are allowed to loosen the, restric the restrictions in the child class. So in this case, the parent is saying this should be uh, an array. And here you're saying, well, I'm going to extend it. It still allows an array, so it's still compatible with the parent, but we're also allowing other types at this point for the FN function here. In PHP 7.1, it would give you a warning. It would complain about that. And they're really, according to Liskov, there really is no reason why you can't widen the type. So that's one of the changes. Again, this should not break your code. If you're upgrading from 7.1 to 7.2, it just means a warning is going to go away. Nothing else. We now allow trailing commas everywhere. We allowed that in arrays before, but now, sort of with a nod to the great JavaScript comma debate, um, Anywhere you have a list of things separated by commas, in PHP 7.2, you can now have a trailing comma. Kind of a minor feature. There's an object type hint now. Um, this basically allows you to say that something takes an object, doesn't matter what type of object, and something returns an object, whatever type of object that might be. We've also de deprecated uncoded strings. They still work, but they will spew a warning. Um, it was kind of a weird legacy feature from ages and ages ago. You could put in a string, and if it didn't match a constant, it would just be treated as a string, even though it didn't have quotes around it. And it still works, because some code relies on that. But it's going to go away in the next major version of PHP. So we're spewing out warnings for it now. And you can pass extra headers to the mail function as an array. Again, quite a minor feature. We've also added argon2i, which is a hashing mechanism. And probably the biggest feature of 7.2 is we've moved away from mcrypt completely now, and everything is now based on libsodium, which is an encryption library. mcrypt is in heavy use still, but it hasn't been updated in about eight years. It's unmaintained. An unmaintained crypto security library is a really, really bad situation to be in. So we're now using a maintained Libsodium library. There's a really good online book about Libsodium here uh, if you want to learn more about it. But all your encryption needs can basically be solved through Sodium calls now. Things that may break your code, like I said, we moved completely away from mcrypt. 
This already warned in PHP 7.1, saying this stuff is deprecated, it's going to go away, and it's now completely been removed in 7.2. That's probably your most, most of your work upgrading to PHP 7.2 is probably going to be mcrypt related. And a couple of other really old features have been removed that might break your stuff. Or at least spew warnings now. All right, so I promised I'd talk a little bit about DCE and SCCP. So DCE stands for dead code elimination. Um, another term we use is escape analysis and sparse conditional constant propagation. What this all means is that we will go and look at the code and see if there's anything that doesn't need to be there before we cache the opcodes in the opcache. So if you write code like this, a equals 1 returns 0. What's the point of this A equals 1 here? Right? Absolutely nothing, right? The way PHP handles global variables, you have to declare globals, so this can have absolutely no side effect. And that's where escape analysis comes in. We analyze this and see, is there any way for this $A variable to escape this context? And there isn't. So in PHP 7.1, this would actually do exactly what you asked it to, and it would assign int, uh, int 1 to $A and return 0, and that's the opcodes that would get cached. In PHP 7.2, we completely remove that assignment. So that A equals 1 is as if it wasn't even there, because what gets cached in the opcode cache is just return 0. So every subsequent request after the first one won't even see that, and it has no impact on the code whatsoever. We can try more complicated things. So in this case, we're passing in four strings. We're concatenating them together, putting that result in x. Then we overwrite that x variable, and we return x. And here, PHP 7.2 is smart. It still receives the variables, but that's actually a no-op. It doesn't do anything. It, so that entire function here is just replaced with return 0. You can also see the x variable went away, because x equals 0 return x. There's no reason to make that assignment either, because that whole function reduces down to just as if you had written return zero in your function, which obviously runs much faster than having to execute all these opcodes in PHP 7.1. You can try to trick it. So in this case, I mean, this is legal PHP, B equals A plus equals 3, um, and PHP 7.2 is smart enough to see that there's absolutely no reason for B to be in here. So B is eliminated. Um, so we just add 3 to A and return that. There's some things that aren't, you can trick it a little further, and 7.2 doesn't quite have the smarts yet. In PHP 7.3, we're making this even smarter. So in this case, you just do the assignment here and then return A. Um, PHP 7.1 couldn't quite figure this case out. Um, in 7.3, it can also figure out object stuff. So in this case, it does escape analysis one level up to figure out, is there any point in this instantiation of object A? And it looks at the object and sees, well, we're just assigning a property, but nothing is happening with that property. There's no point in any of this. Just get rid of it. So this entire function gets re reduced to just if, as if you had written return $x. Um, if you added the structure to it, then suddenly escape analysis say, wait a second, that the structure might do something. And in this case, we can't eliminate instantiating the A object because in case the structure does something, and we're currently only going one level up to check to see if there are constructors and destructors. If there is a function that will get called on the object getting constructed or destructed, then we know, hey, there's a chance this will escape, and we can't reduce it down to something simpler. Um, stuff like this. Here, PHP 7.3 is slightly more efficient than PHP 7.2. Here, we basically go through, we figure everything out, and this function, re this function ends up just being returned 4. Right? If you do the math on this thing, you don't need to create A and B, because this stuff will always return 4, nothing else. It also understands conditionals, and this one's kind of cool. If you walk through it, you will see that nothing ever gets done other than return zero here. No matter what x is, because it's only looking 
at A0, this 1 and 2 doesn't matter. So the if x doesn't matter, this function will always return 0. And the escape analysis in SCCP is smart enough to reduce all this down just to return 0, which is quite magical, actually. And then you can go a little bit crazy. Right? Here you have an example where all this code gets reduced to echo 1 return 4. And that's all PHP will execute. And the end result of all this is that if you write really, really crappy code, PHP 7.2 and PHP 7.3, even more so, is going to run it really, really fast. If you run decent code, you're not going to see as much of a speed, a speed up from PHP 7.3 and 7.2. But it's been sort of PHP's thing forever. Like PHP runs crappy code really, really well. It runs it fast and it works. And that's why PHP has become so popular, because you try something and it just works. And heck, it's even fast. Very few other languages can say that. It's not always great, um, but it really helps people get started with it. And it doesn't prevent people from writing better code in the future. It's just that they don't have this huge pressure to write better code. So you end up with some bad code. And that's where static analysis comes in, which was my next topic. So I wrote this static analysis tool called Fan. You can find it at github.com slash fan. Very easy to install via Composer, or you can install it directly just by cloning from GitHub. You can initialize the dash dash init creates a dot fan config.php, and you can run it vendor bin fan on your project. And it checks all kinds of things. If you have PHP doc type annotations in there, it'll check they're correct. Check that all methods are defined. Everything you, anything you call and any constants, properties that you try to access in your code, it's all defined and at the right access level for you to call it. Checks type safety everywhere, version compatibility, checks for no ops, unreachable code, unused statements, all kinds of things. You can also write plugins that extend the static analyzer to check for whatever you want. And there's a bunch of included plugins. And I'm going to demo a few of them. So here I have a bit of PHP code. And I'm actually showing the Vim integration, because I'm a VI guy, VI guy forever. Um, if I were to change this constructor to say, this returns an integer, and I save the file, it's complaining, wait a second, constructors can't declare return type because it makes no sense. Nothing's going to catch this return value. So fan can catch stuff like that. Oops. Oh, I messed up my undo. Um, other things, say you miss the bracket on the count. I mean, this is syntactically valid. It's not what you meant to do, right? If I try to save that, it gives you all kinds of errors, saying, wait a second. Um, Non-bool is evaluated in an if, which is one of the user plugins I have enabled right now. But you also have this array to int comparison, where you're comparing an array to an integer, which is valid, um, but it's probably not what you meant to do. So here, fan can come in and really help out with silly things. It also lets you have um, array shapes in the sense that you can say this property r is an array with the key is always an integer and the value is always a string. And if at some point you decide to assign an integer into this array, you'll see, wait a second, you're assigning an integer, but property C-A-R-R -R is defined to be an array of int string type. Right? So here it catches the fact that you're putting in a value that um, you said shouldn't be possible, because you said it should only be int with string values. It also does even more. Um, if you mess up a regex, it actually can go and look at your regex and say, hey, this is not a valid regex. And this is before running your code, right? This is just a static analyzer going through. And also even printf strings and stuff. So here, we're passing a string to a printf. And it can figure out and say, wait a second, you're passing in a string but you're using percent %d in your printf string, which actually means integer. Um, so that's probably not going to do what you want it to do. And also, one of the user plugins, you can do things like tell it, well, I'm not going to allow 
something like this. Oops. Personally, I love dollar dollar variables, but I know many people don't. And here you can add the plugin. There's a dollar dollar plugin for fan. We can make that sort of a company wide policy. Don't do dollar dollar stuff in our code base at this company. And at Etsy, we run fan on, um, well, people can run it individually on their own machines, but we also run it as part of the test suite. So if you're going to push something to production, it has to pass all our fan checks, including our plugin things. And it catches a ton of silly mistakes before it hits production. Because unless you have 100% code coverage in your unit tests, which nobody does, and that's a waste of time trying to get to 100%, um, you're going to need a static analyzer like this to help catch things. All right, I am completely out of time. Thank you very much. And there are references here to everything I talked about. <laughs>